Effective public speaking is not simply about learning what to say, but about developing the confidence to say it. For many, it all comes down to overcoming those nerves and convincing yourself that you can actually get up there and speak. Shalvin Pandelana Morales and for today's video let us tackle about the techniques in building self-confidence when you're speaking in front of the audience. These techniques can really help you to boost your confidence when you are speaking in front of your audience. First up, prepare well. The correlation between preparation and nervousness is consistent. More practice results in less nervousness. The best, most consistent, and direct way to minimize the level of nervousness you feel is through effective preparation. There is difference between knowing what are you talking about and knowing what are you going to say. Thinking about your presentation can be helpful, but that sort of presentation will not give you a sense of what you are actually going to say. Many students do not practice effectively, and this can result in the wrong idea that practice isn't helpful. Second, visualize success. Speakers should visualize success. As you practice visualizing yourself presenting with confidence of a receptive audience. See your relaxed facial reaction and hear your confident vocal tone. Imagine yourself moving gracefully, complementing what you say with expressive gestures. Imagine that audience reacting appropriately, nodding appreciatively, and giving thoughtful consideration to your points. Number three, avoid gimmicks. Some acting coach and speech teachers encourage their students to practice in front of the mirrors so that they can watch themselves perform and evaluate how they move. In acting, this can be very useful, but in speaking, it is less so. When you practice your presentation, the most important element is expressiveness. If you want to become more familiar with your volume of material, the order in which you plan to present it, and the phrasing you think would be the most effective to express it. Watching yourself perform in a mirror will focus your attention on your appearance first and on what you express second. This makes using a mirror during a practice a distraction from what the practice ought to achieve. Some reason, the myth persists that imagining your audience in their pajamas or something similarly silly is an effective way to make standing in front of them seem less scary. This sort of gimmicks don't work. In fact, concentrating on anything other than what you're doing is distracting and not beneficial at all. Do your best to avoid such advice and visualize success. Next in the technique of building self-confidence is a breathe and release. This is very familiar to us. Breathe and release is a shortcut relaxation technique that could be useful for nervous speakers, especially those who are concerned with physical manifestation of nervousness, such as shaky hands or knees. The key to breathe and release is to understand that when nervous tension results in minor trembling, the effort of trying to keep one's hand from shaking can contribute to the whole situation. That is, trying to stop literally can make it worse. Therefore, the best approach is through relaxation. Remember, relax everything from the fingertips to the very bottom edge of your shoulder blades. Next, minimize what you memorize. One important hint for speech presentation involves avoiding the writing of an entirely scripted version of the presentation. Many people have the impression that writing a script of the entire speech is the necessary first step in preparation. That practicing 
can only happen after you are done writing the entire speech. Unfortunately, this common impression is mistaken. Fans of sports are conversant about their favorite teams. Experts are conversant in their fields. A well-prepared speaker is conversant with regard to her topic. Consider how being conversant in this manner allows freer, more fluid communication with no stress associated with your ability to remember what words you wanted to use. Being conversant also gives the speaker the best chance to recognize and react to audience feedback. So if you are completely focused on the integrity of descriptive comments, then you will be unable to read and react to your audience in a meaningful way. Many people have had experience being in a stage play or some other type of performance that involve memorized recitation of a script. Many of us might recall moments during rehearsals when our mind would freeze and we might need just a quick reminder, the next word or a phrase, the next few notes to get back on track. This is because people do not memorize in units but in phrases or chunks. Preparing for a speech by memorizing a written script engages your mind at a different level from that of conversant speaker. Concentrating on remembering words is different from paying attention on how one's audience is reacting. The goal of public speaking should never be about loyal recreation of a script, but it is about getting the appropriate response from your audience. Trying to remember an entirely scripted speech can result in the rather ironic situation of a person being able confidently and smoothly to discuss the topic in a casual conversation, but still quite stress about their ability to remember their scripted comments. So next is practice out loud. So speaking in public is no different from any other activity in this way. To minimize the chance that your presentation will come out smoothly and polished, you will need to hear it all the way. By practicing out loud from the beginning to the ending, you will be able to listen to your whole speech and properly gauge the flow of your entire presentation. Additionally, without at least one complete out loud practice, there will be no way to accurately estimate the length of your speech and your presentation will remain insufficient. And lastly, for the techniques of building self-confidence is you need to customize your practice. So today we've discussed a variety of techniques in this chapter. From the importance of out loud practice to suggestions of when, during your preparation, you should start the out loud practice. Do you prepare more for a written paper than for an oral presentation? Do you have goals of presenting a scripted message? Or do you practice out loud? When during your process do you practice out loud? Do you practice at all before you begin to compose your speaking notes? Or do you only practice after? Remember that dealing with CA or communicative apprehension often involves the breaking of a mental habit. It is a good idea to change what you have done previously. Be deliberate. Observe what works for your situation. Speak more. Write and revive less. Be sure to practice out loud at least once during your presentation or your preparation in order to prepare yourself sufficiently. Reflect on your personal concerns and try cognitive restructuring on those concerns. Take your time, do the work, have confidence that your preparation will yield positive results. So that's all for today class. Thank you for listening. Hope you find something new and learn some techniques on how to build your self-confidence. And you need to remember that if you wish to forget anything on the spot, make a note that this thing is to be remembered. Thank you.